Okay, so Dinah's down for a couple of days until I can get a special wrench out here. And so while I'm waiting on that wrench here for a couple of days until it gets here, um, I can turn my attention to Dumpy because uh, Dumpy's uh, been working on Dumpy's working on fixing, working on getting around to <laughs> uh, completing Dumpy's brakes and rear axle work uh so that uh, we can get uh, him back on the road this is what they call an oil bath uh type of axle and thank you for that thomas schmidt homestead projects by the way the um the uh bearings are operated by oil uh, you do grease them before you put them in but mostly they're lubricated by oil that comes from the differential back there. So you fill uh, the differential and it fills up high enough to actually come in through the axles here and lubricate stuff. So we've got all new seals, new bearings, new bearing raises, uh, new uh, brake cylinders. Well, we've got it apart. We're just not going to mess with it. And then what I've got to do is I've got to remove the drive shaft. I've got to remove the drive shaft from the uh, front of that um, differential there and then uh, clean that up put a new gasket or flange or seal of some kind around the where the carrier uh, inserts into the differential and then uh, reseal it because i i'm pretty sure all of the oil is drained out of that thing so we got to make sure <clears throat> that doesn't leak anymore that we're good to go and we should be good to go with dumpy So they're bearing and seal out of here. Oh, Am I bending? you're bending this frame. Oh, I see it. Oh, shit. That's, it's okay. It's okay. Now here are the old bearing races that were inside the drum and hub, the hub. Um, I, sh I thought I'd give you a look-see at these bearings, and I don't know if that shows up on camera very well, but you might be able to see dark spots or flecks in that metal. Uh, little pits and little, you know, like abrasions. That is a worn-out bearing race. And so we definitely want to replace these. Um, what happens is, of course, the grease runs out or whatever, and grit gets inside there rubs along the inside of the race you know the bearing is i'll show you here the bearing is forcing it around inside the rolling it around in there and causing those pits and you know premature or maybe not premature <laughs> who knows that these aren't original um you know wear of the bearing race and the bearing and then okay so i thought i'd show you a worn bearing now, keep in mind, these bearings, in my opinion, are not so bad that they can never be reused again. But these are the two front side bearings of the rear axle, left and right. And the things I noticed when I first pulled them out was, number one, they were practically dry. They had a little bit of grease on them, but not much. So that's the first indicator you might have a problem. Second indicator is, I don't know if you can see this amount of play here um, along the, uh, you know, the little holders the races here um but that's that's a good amount of play that's about a 16th of an inch of play and for a bearing a machine part that's that's pretty uh pretty incredible i'll show you a new bearing a new bearing also has play front to back it has to have a little bit you know to help the wheel turn but the play is not nearly enough uh, not nearly as much it's you know about a maybe a 64th of an inch so that's one indicator uh, that you've got a worn bearing Another one is just spin it and listen. I don't know if that comes through in the sound on the camera, but there's almost a metal to metal sounding, you know, quality to it. It does roll, you know, it, it does, you know, does do its thing as a bearing, but still a little bit more scraping kind of sound than I think should be expected from a precision bearing. And then also just look at the, the surfaces, uh, you know, where they meet. This doesn't look too bad. This is where the nut, you know, cinches up against it when it tightens inside the wheel. 
It doesn't look too bad, but there could be some scoring here. That would be one thing to look for. Um, and then also on the inside, where it meets the axle, could be another indicator. But also the rollers themselves, and I don't know if you can see that on this uh, coming through on the camera, but these rollers are pretty scored. There's a lot of scoring, you know, going crossways like this. That tells me that some dirt got in there, you know, and really rubbed around inside there. Another thing you might look for, and then that's, I don't see any on these, but discoloration from heat. If, um, if your bearings are not lubricated or the lubrication runs out or something like that, and you run this vehicle, these bearings will get hot and uh, they could discolor. So any rainbowing, bluing of a color, you know, things like that uh, could be indicators you got a problem with the bearing. And on this bearing, I don't know if it shows up, but this part of the race right here is literally, uh, you know, pushed out by the roller and sort of chewed up a little bit, like it's been scraping against it. Uh, I don't know, there's, you can see, see damage there where it's been, the metal's been distorted, that kind of thing, so... Now, these two, I've cleaned them up so that I can put them away again. I'm going to keep them. And you say, why would you keep a bad bearing? Well, because you never know. This vehicle's a 1967 vehicle. I do not, and I had a hard time finding these bearings. Um, so, I have no guarantee that if I ever need to replace a bearing again, that I'll be able to find it. Now, I don't, I wouldn't want to put, you know, a worn bearing back in, but, you know, sometimes you have no choice. That's how it is for homesteaders, especially with older equipment. You have to make do with what you have. So I'm going to put these away back in their boxes. I'll wrap them back up in the, um, you know, oil type paper that the, that the new banks came in. And we'll get these put away. We'll save them for another day, just in case. May never need them, but you never know. Sorry if there's an echo, but I'm talking into a break drum. Uh, you know, I've watched videos like this where people do this kind of work. But they never show the details, you know. They say, I'm going to pull, you pull it off with this, and the next scene, they've already got it off. They didn't show you all the hassle they went through and trauma and stuff like that they went through to try to get it removed or put back on or something like that. They didn't want you to see how difficult it is, I guess. But I'm going to point this out to you, because here I am, you know, trying to pound out these bearing races. This is one race right here. It's pressed into the inside of this hub. And down there, right... Let me spud wrench here. Right there, I don't know if you can see where those numbers are. That's the back side of the other race that you know faces the front of the hub. This is the one I'm trying to pound out. And I remembered uh, how I was able to get the other one out because it had been a little while ago when I did it. Um, I remembered having to use a, a big honking piece of steel and a five pound or an eight pound maul or something like that to bang this out because those are in there so tight and I don't have a puller, you know, I don't have a, a, a bearing puller or anything like that that can fit this particular hub. So, I mean, you know, you resort to pounding this stuff out from the backside and just working it out that way. So that's what I'm doing. So I'm using this spud wrench um, down there and then I'm hitting it on top uh, with a big, heavy, uh, well, in this case, a, a pipe wrench because my maul is off site. And you just have to go around you know, hit here, hit there, hit here, hit there, and just work yourself around until that thing works its way down and pops out. And then you flip the drum over and you hit the backside of this one to get it out. And that's, that's the, uh, you know, that's the truth of this kind of work. It's difficult to get these things out. Okay. I don't know if you can see, but I've got it to come down about oh, a quarter of an inch. And, uh, I can see the numbers on it now, but, uh, that was about a dozen hard, hard wax with the, uh, you know, with the spud wrench and the pipe wrench. Uh, and, you know, that's how it is. Unless you do this kind of stuff every day for a living, you don't have the tools. You don't have an arbor press, you know, to press these, to pull the, uh, to press these things in. You don't have a bearing puller to pull them out. I mean, I have bearing pullers, but they're, they're not the right fit for this. So... Uh, you know, this is what you resort to doing. So a few more wax and this thing should fall down into the bucket near that huge glob of beeswax grease. And then we'll flip this over and get this one out. Okay, well, yeah, 
cleaned up the inside of the brake drum a little bit. Uh, just used a uh, flap wheel disc on the end of the drill to sort of rough it up. Uh, but, you know, if you're going to put new shoes in, it's not a bad idea to rough up the inside of the um, drum. Get rid of any glaze that may be on there or whatever. Next step will be to install bearing raises. And then uh, get this thing installed with new bearings and all that good stuff. Okay, the new bearing races are in. Uh, thanks to Thomas Schmidt with Thomas Schmidt Homesteading Project, who I would encourage you to check out. I use the old uh, bearing races that I punched out to use as guides in helping me hammer the new ones in since I don't have an arbor press. That only took me so far. Uh, to get them in the rest of the way, I used a piece of bronze here. It's just a bronze nipple uh, to set it here along the edge and hammer it in until it got down to the seat. Uh, bronze is nice because, as you can see, it gives before the hardened steel. So uh, that way I wouldn't booger up the bearing race. So anyway, that was how I did that. Okay, so I'm looking at the spindle here and I'm noticing this groove. Well, I'm sure it shows up on the camera right here where my fingernail is this groove. This groove is not original to the manufacturer of this spindle. The spindle was originally flat and that's a pretty noticeable groove. That groove happens when uh, you have an oil seal on here with a traditional, you know, rubber or fabric, uh, you know, seal flange here that just over the years rubs and rubs against that as the wheel turns. Uh, so I'm not putting these back because I don't know if you can see it or not, but they are really worn out. For all I know, they may be original to this vehicle. Who knows? But uh, there's a new style of seal I'm going to put in here. I'll show it to you. Okay. This seal here, as you can see, it's rubber. There's no fabric in here at all. There is a little flange, but it's flat. And uh, the way this works is both the inside and the outside turn. So I don't know if it shows up on camera. I don't think I can get it to turn well. But um, this here, uh, see how that turns like that? This seal is designed to turn. The seal turns instead of the flange turning, so it doesn't cause that wear on the metal. Now, that seal will go right here, okay? Uh, this says air side on here. And on this side would be the oil side. But uh, it will insert right here. And then it will also tighten against the spindle here. Let's grease up the new bearings, get them in, and get this hub installed. Uh, these these hubs have two sets of bearings. There's an inner set, which is closer to the uh, differential. There's an outer set on the other side. Uh, but uh, as you can see, it fits in the race just like that. Nice new bearing. Beautiful fit. That'll go in there like that, but before we put it in there, and before we can put the seal over it, we got to grease this bearing really good. I don't know about you, how much experience you've got with greasing wheel bearings, but I have a little, and... It was always a challenge for me to get to feel like I got enough grease inside of these things for it to, uh, you know, to do a proper job of lubrication. Uh, so I ran across this and um, we'll try it out. It, it's, uh, it's basically a little cone that you stick the bearing on like that, put the top on. As you can see, there's a little oil zert, or, I mean a grease zert on top. If you screw this together, so this end will screw into that hole right there, for providing a uh, you know a little bit of a uh, enclosure inside the bearing, and then you take a grease gun, hook it here, pump it full of grease until it oozes out of the bearing over here, insert the bearing. Then you'll know you've got grease really uh, doing a good job throughout the whole bearing. So in case you're interested. This is the uh, grease I'm using, Lucas Red and Tacky, uh, one of the uh, one of the better uh, greases. I got lucky. I found a whole bunch of this on the clearance rack at Tractor Supply here a while back, and I bought as much as I I think I bought everything they had there on the shelf. So I got a whole bunch of it because, you know, Dinah uses it. Um, 
but uh, it was on sale for three hundred. Regular price on this about mm, somewhere between four ninety nine and six ninety nine, depending on where you get it. But this was marked at three ninety nine. Then when I went to the counter, he says, "Oh, actually, we marked it down again and didn't put stickers on. It's it actually two two dollars and nineteen cents per tube, which is a deal on this Lucas stuff." So. Anyway, I think it's good grease. Hope you do too. While I was changing the grease and the gun, I cheated and looked inside. And that whole reservoir inside of there is full. So a few pumps here should be providing enough pressure to push it through. Here it comes. Maybe you can see it squeezing out the bottom there. Press down a little bit. There we get. Let's tighten this. All right. Hopefully, that will do it. Let's see. Got piled more grease into this race than the bearings got in it. We'll see. There's plenty of grease in there, that's for sure. Now that we're pumped full of grease, just remove it. Should leave us a pretty nice little ring of grease there. Yep. Let's insert it into the race. What a mess. Hopefully it'll be a good mess. Uh, that's the idea. Uh, that's a lot of grease. I'm gonna hold it in place. Hold this in place. We insert this seal. I have to tap it in. Yeah, getting around to getting these brakes put back together. Uh, I could not find replacement shoes for this truck because it's so old so i had a uh, shop oh a couple hours away and had them uh reline these brakes so now we can put this back together oh uh as you can see we've installed new wheel cylinders uh only this wheel had leaking cylinders the other wheel over there did not but you know, if you're going to go to this trouble to pull this wheel apart, pull all these bearings out, replace them, repack everything, you know, go back with, uh, you know, newer stuff. While you're in there, it's not that much more work or expense to replace two cylinders on the other side. So, and then that way, you know, hopefully we have no trouble with this. Now, getting back to this, we have to put the uh, drum back on. I wanted to replace the brake drums because they're out of uh, spec by just a little bit and they couldn't be you know ground but you know thinking about the age of this truck the use that we're going to give it stuff like that we just figured we would go ahead and use a flap wheel disc on the brake drum um to uh to shave you know to, to clean it up and just put it back because new brake drums for this thing not only are they rare and i looked all over the country for them uh the manufacturers don't make these anymore there are two available left and they wanted six hundred dollars a piece plus shipping and i just don't think i want to uh undergo that expense right now uh, with all the other things we've got going. And like I said, as much use as this truck is going to get from us, um, I, you know, I, I wish I could afford to do it. It would be nice to put new drums on it, but I just can't. And that's just part of the decisions you make when you're dealing with old equipment and you're dealing with homesteading and all the projects you got going and stuff like that. You just make do the best you can. I guess I'm going to have to adopt the old you know, farmer mindset, number one, if it's not broke, don't fix it. And number two, if it is broke, get it put back together as cheaply and efficiently as you can. So that's what we're going to do. Might have just 
wiped off all my grease I put here. But this is where that oil bath comes from, and I'm talking about. It should spill out from the differential this way, and then sort of surround the bearings on the spindle in oil. Oil breeze. Little breeze. <clears throat> Little dab do you. It was easier than I thought it was going to be. So glad. Wow. We got another bearing that goes in here in the front. It needs to be greased and inserted. Then a nut. Then a thrust washer. And then a nut. Okay, so I'm one of those people who's, you know, you know, normally thinks you can't have too much grease, but there's a lot of grease on this. On it, in it, whatever. I guess that's good in a way, but it sure is messy. All right, let's get this in here. Uh, work down into the race, which is good. We got a ton of grease on this spindle. Let me get rid of this. The washer has a little tab on it that agrees with the groove inside of the spindle axle, the axle here spindle so we'll put that on there slide it in there there's actually a little nub on this um, on that first nut in there that this would align with so I have to turn the nut to adjust it I'm gonna leave it there for the for the moment and just put this one on these all have to be torqued and I'm not ready to torque them yet because in order to torque them I really should have the wheels back on. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna spin it on here uh, and get it out of my way and to protect it, I'm gonna put this little bit of uh, paper towel there to protect the, uh, we'll call it, cover this over just to keep the dust and things like that out until such time as I'm ready to get back to it. But I have to put the wheel on, as I said, because when I torque those nuts down, the wheel needs to be spinning, and that helps, you know, cinch things down and eases things a little bit while you're trying to do it. Uh, but now that that's on, and uh, I'm assured it's clean, good, ready to go, I'm going to do the other, I'm going to get the other axle to this point, and then I'll be ready to uh, put the wheels on and torque things down. <laughs> 